Hi, this is Kailana with Handmade by Kailana, and today I'm going to be working on some Halloween DIYs. So today I'm going to be working on making some cool Halloween decorations for my house. I'm going to be taking dollar store materials and other discounted materials from local hobby shops and put them together and hopefully transform them into something special. So for my first project, I want to work on a Day of the Dead inspired wreath. At the dollar store this year, I picked up these really cool Day of the Dead um, signs. They are so pretty with the glitter. Um, and they're really nicely decorated. I got this red one with the heart and the roses. And I also got this one with more of a pink theme. They're really cool. And so I was thinking I would take some of the skeletons that I got at the dollar store and decorate them in this theme. And then, you know, make it into a wreath. So let's get started. From the dollar store, I bought three of these large skeletons. I cut off the hanger on the top and then painted them with white gesso. The first one I pulled apart before painting, but I left the other two intact. It was much easier to paint them when they were whole, and I ended up needing to retouch all of them, even the one that I had pulled apart, so I recommend leaving them intact. The gesso was perfect because it stuck well to the plastic, even without sanding, and was already the correct color for my skeletons. I got this square wreath form from the dollar store too. I thought the square shape might look a lot more interesting for a Halloween wreath. I simply glued on two of the skeletons. One is sitting in the wreath and the other one is standing on the other side peeking over the top of the wreath. I gave my sitting skeleton a little cheeky pose as she's laughing into one of her hands. I gave the other skeleton a jack-o'-lantern pail to hold to make it a little more interesting. Her hands and forearm were molded together, so I just cut off her hand and used hot glue to fill in the gap, and then painted over the hot glue with gesso, and that worked great. I added some watered-down black paint to give some shading, and where it got too dark, I just added some watered-down white paint over it until I was happy with the way it looked. Then I took my trusty Posca pens out and drew on my Day of the Dead decorations on both skeletons, using the two signs I got from the dollar store as inspiration. While I intended to just put them on the face, the body looks so plain without clothes, so I added the decorations to the body as well. I really like how those came out. Now that my skeletons are completed, I'm going to work on the ribbon part of the wreath. I got several beautiful Halloween ribbons at Joann's. It was buy two and get three free. I also had some ribbon and tool in my stash from previous projects, which I used as well. I really just used whatever I had on hand. My Halloween decorations this year had more of a purple tint, um, so I decided to go with those ribbon colors for my wreath. I first cut craft pipe cleaners into small ties. I got these at the dollar store. I then layered three of my favorite ribbons together. I attached them to the middle wire on my wreath. I then measured out six inches and then scrunched them up and added it to my wreath with another pipe cleaner. Since I had a finite amount of each ribbon, I wanted to know how many 6 inch pieces I could get out of my rolls so I could figure out how many loops I could put in each section of my wreath. So without adding them directly to my wreath form yet, I just kept layering the three ribbons and twisting a pipe cleaner every 6 inches until I reached the end of the shortest roll. Now I knew how many loops I had and then I could figure out how many could go in each section, then attach them to the wreath form. After putting my ribbons on and fluffing them out, I realized I needed another row of ribbon. So I added one of my Halloween ribbons to some white mesh I had left over from a Christmas project. I added that line to the outside of the wreath.
I added some glitter pumpkin picks that I had gotten in a pack from the dollar store, which picks up the orange in the jack-o'-lantern pail. I noticed I could still see a little of the wreath form on the left side of my wreath, so I decided to add one more row of ribbon on the inside wire of the wreath form. I used some white mesh again and some purple tool that I had on hand. That filled it out perfectly after I fluffed everything out. I did not like the blank space on the left of the wreath where my second skeleton is standing up. So I took this metal piece, it says spooky. It came in a set of three at the dollar store and I just glued that to the middle of the wreath to fill in that negative space. Then I added a ribbon to make a loop to hang my wreath and I'm done. So here's my wreath. I am so happy with how it came out. I think it looks really cool. I love the skeletons. I think um, they came out really interesting. All the decorations on this wreath are from the dollar store other than the ribbon. Um, the skeletons, the spooky sign, the pumpkin picks, as well as the pumpkin um, pale, even the wreath form itself is from the dollar store. So this did not cost a lot to make and I think it came out really cool. I can't wait to hang this up. I found this sign heavily discounted at my local craft store. I like how it already comes with a stand that you can just pull out. There are four cauldrons stacked on top of one another. I painted them all black. I wanted to make some witch's brew bubbling out of the top of each cauldron. I just used hot glue and then added some googly eyes into the mixture, a perfect ingredient for any witch. I then used some Mod Podge over the hot glue areas, leaving the googly eyes uncovered and then put a generous amount of purple glitter. I love how the googly eyes peek out. I then used these deco art glazes in magenta and turquoise and folk art dragonfly glaze to paint the cauldrons. I added some silver to my cauldron candles with a Posca pen. Then with my Cricut, I cut out some simple free Halloween themed pictures, a spider and a web and some candy. I also cut out the word trick or treat and put that on too. To add just a little more detail, I took my Posca pens, primarily white, and added some shine to the candy, a few cobwebs and spiders and other simple embellishments. So here's my second project completed, my Witch's Cauldron sign. Um, I really enjoy this. It's kind of more on the cutesy side of Halloween. I love all parts of Halloween. I like the creepy, I like the cutesy, um, and this one really pulls on the cutesy side. I got this sign from Joann's on like 60% off, so I think it was five or $10, but that was the only thing I purchased for this particular project, everything else. I just took what I had and figured out how I wanted to utilize it. I used some Cricut um, cutouts as well as, you know, hot glue, googly eyes, things that I had on hand. In fact, one of my favorite elements on this is the sparkly witch's brew. I love how the googly eyes um, poke out of the hot glue. It, initially, I had intended to paint over the googly eyes to like have bubbles coming out of the brew and just to bulk up the hot glue. But when I saw how it looked with the eyes, I thought it looked really creepy, really cool. So I'm really happy with that piece of this sign. So here's my next project. It's my simplest today and one of my favorites. This was so easy to make. I just grabbed 
a paper mache pumpkin from Joann's on sale. It was like five dollars. And then I just used um, some paint that I had at home. I painted it black and then used um, this iridescent dragonfly glaze on it. I just love, those are my favorite colors, purple and teal, and it shifts into those various colors. So pretty. Um, and then I used a different iridescent glaze on the leaves. And this is your sophisticated grown-up Halloween um, decor. And so could you imagine like a bunch of these in different sizes um, on a mantle or on your table? So pretty. And again, really simple to do. In fact, my five-year-old made this one. And, you know, this was an easy project for her because all you have to do is paint black and then you can put on the glaze and you don't have to be super precise with it. So, yeah, like if you put a bunch of these on a mantle, wouldn't that be so pretty? Um, this one is definitely going to be brought out every year. Um, it's so nice. I really, I really love this one. Now to my Beware Witch Property sign. I have this wood sign and I'm going to start by painting it with my white gesso. While the gesso is still wet, I'm adding in some black to give it a gray tone and concentrating the pure black paint on the edges and grooves of the sign. I took one of the large skeletons that I had painted earlier and glued her to the top of the sign. I then added a black cauldron, also from the dollar store. Then it's time to add back in the skeleton's limbs, which I posed them as I glued them back. I also added a glittery pumpkin to the top of the sign. My sign is going to read, Beware which property trespassers will be used as ingredients. I got the Beware metal piece from the dollar store. I cut out the rest of the words on my Cricut and outlined the words to make them pop a bit from the dark background. For my cauldron, I wanted to add a little trespasser who had failed to heed my warning. I stuffed in some green felt so I could have my little skeleton floating at the top of the cauldron. I got this smaller skeleton in a pack from the dollar store. I just pulled all the pieces apart and stuck them into the cauldron. I made sure the skull was sitting right on top and in the center. I used hot glue to keep the little skeleton's pieces in place and also used it to make the base of my witch's brew. Some of it is bubbling out on the sides of the cauldron. I then painted the hot glue with Mod Podge and added purple and green glitter. To finish off my skeleton witch, I added a witch's hat. I then colored in the eyes and nose with a Posca pen and gave the rest of the skeleton some shading with watered down black paint. So my final project is completed. It is my Beware Witch's Property sign. I love signs like this that are a little cheeky, a little funny, um, and this fit the bill for me. I got this sign from Ross's for like $4. I do like to check out their craft area because it's right next to the dollar store. And so um, for a few more dollars, you can get something that's just a little bit more high quality. Um, this one is so thick, nice wood, and it's just more substantial. It's bigger. I was going to use a, another sign that I got from the dollar store, but it was just so thin and just smaller that I thought this would be more proportional to the, my skeleton, who's quite large. Um, so that's a good tip to, you know, look at those stores, check out their craft area, because for a couple more dollars, you can get something that's just way better. Um, but otherwise, everything else came from the dollar store. Um, the, these metal pieces um, came in a pack of three, my skeleton hat, everything came in the dollar store. I think the best part of this is my little witch's brew with my trespasser inside um, to kind of go along with this thing. Really happy with this, can't wait to hang it up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I wish you a happy Halloween and I'll see you next time.